This is Greg Troutwine with Maritime Reporter TV. We're here in New Orleans at the International Workboat Show, and we're very pleased to be joined by Joel Reed of Cox Diesel. Thank Joel, you. first and foremost, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having this interview. Okay. So, Joel, just to start things off, uh, why don't you tell us your title? and your area of responsibility with Cox and a little background on your history in the maritime industry. Okay, well I'm the global sales director for Cox and my responsibility basically is to manage all the relationships with the market. Um, so from setting up the distributor network, the dealer network, um, defining the sales strategy, the marketing strategy, the branding strategy, so everything really that is related with selling the engine and most importantly servicing and after sales and making sure that the engines are running mm -hmm. once they're on the boats. So again, I'm, I'm sure many of our viewers know the Cox name, uh, but for those who are not in the know, why don't you just give us a brief overview sure. of the company and your offering? Sure. So Cox Powertrain is one of those very unique um, organizations in which it's a startup company, which is not unusual per se in the marine industry but it is very unusual when you think of engine development because engines are normally developed by big corporations, Caterpillars, Cummins, Yamahas. Mm -hmm. um, so 10 years ago, the Minis Ministry of Defense in the UK asked Cox to develop um, a diesel outboard for to comply with the single fuel requirements um, defined by NATO. So that's how the whole project kick-started at that point it was just David Cox who was the founder of the company um, and two other people so because engine development is extremely expensive um, we've had to raise just over a hundred million dollars to be able to deliver these products and create all the infrastructure to be able to support them in the long run so at the moment Cox is formed of close to a hundred people mm -hmm. we have another 50 or 60 people um, who are working on the project, but external to Cox. Mm -hmm. um, and that's through the joint venture or technical partnership we have with Ricardo, mm -hmm. the UK engineering firm who supports us with the development of the engine. Um, and we take care of the design of the engine, mm -hmm. the supply chain and, man and procurement, mm -hmm. assembly, mm -hmm. testing, um, and then delivery to distributors. We have two facilities, mm -hmm. one in the UK, mm -hmm. um, in Brighton, so it's just an hour south of London, with a production line that we're setting up and test uh, cells. Um, so that facility will have a capacity for 2,000 units a year mm -hmm. um, with one shift, and that's what we will hope to be doing in the first year. And we're about to sign a new facility in the US, mm -hmm. in southern Florida, that will be our use headquarters and hopefully in a period of two years time that will also have its own independent production line or assembly line and mm -hmm. test cells to be able to serve the American markets. Diesel obviously is very common in the marine industry. Diesel outboards, not as much. Uh, when, when you're talking to your clients, uh, what are some of the main advantages or what, what are you stressing to the market as to why they should be considering a diesel outboard? So, you can't really convince people to go for diesel when in their minds they want gas. Mm -hmm. So really, the, the market we're targeting are the people who call themselves either, you know, I'm a diesel guy, mm -hmm. but I want outboards. Um, so the same way when people go into a car dealership mm -hmm. and they, to buy a truck, they know if they want a diesel truck or if they want a gas truck. And you can't, you know, it's very hard to sway them mm -hmm. and very unnatural also. Um, so we don't try and push people into a category mm -hmm. that they don't naturally feel comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, so the first thing I say, you know, do you want a diesel? Mm -hmm. if, if the answer is yes, mm -hmm. then it's more about um, these engines have all the advantages that any diesel has. Mm -hmm. They've got a 25 to 30 percent fuel savings. Um, they've got longer life. Um, they're more heavy duty, um, they need less main maintenance. Uh, the service interval is one of the big ones, so mm. you only need to take the engines out of the water and drop the leg to change the water pump once a year or every thousand hours. Mm -hmm. So for the commercial operators, that's, that's a big selling point. Mm -hmm. um, for the recreational users who will do maybe 100 hours a year, mm -hmm. not as relevant. Mm. Um, but I don't have to put too much emphasis on kind of the classical diesel 
advantages versus mm -hmm. gas because the the audience already knows it normally um so it's more about the service that we can offer the warranty that we can offer um and we have put some innovation into the engine to make it comply with commercial mm. because all the outboards today in the market they're all designed for recreational use mm. the fact that they're used in military or government or commercial um is just you know um by chance okay. you know so we've designed the lower unit to last much longer than the current lo lower units on the outboard so we've had to make it more robust we've put a water filter into the gearbox mm -hmm. and we've put a magnet into the gearbox mm -hmm. we put double lip seals in the gearbox so all this to prevent the ingress of water mm -hmm. into the gearbox which is the main reason of failure and that especially all the commercial operators and mm -hmm. governmental operators are telling us is the weak spot of the current outboards. Obviously we're standing in front of a, uh, a pair of your engines mm -hmm. and I understand that the CXO 300 is relatively new to the market. Yes. Uh, would you like to discuss this engine, its development and yes. some of the specifics? Absolutely. So we launched this three weeks ago at the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show. Mm -hmm. um, it's a V8 four-stroke engine, uh, high pressure common rail, twin turbo, 4.4 mm -hmm. uh, litre with a vertical crankshaft. Mm -hmm. So from an architectural point of view, the only unique thing about it really is that it's got a vertical crank. Okay. Um, so you can't really find any diesel engine in the mm -hmm. world with vertical cranks that can, mm -hmm. with these characteristics. Mm -hmm. um, and when we designed this, we had to design it from a blank piece of paper. Mm -hmm. So we designed from scratch, designing the crankshaft and then building outwards mm -hmm. for a specific um, operator usage okay. so we designed this for the heavy duty commercial guys mm -hmm. and for the navy so we have a lot of the heavy duty commercial guys need the torque need the fuel savings but don't need high speed mm -hmm. which is why we've got a 1.46 gear ratio mm -hmm. which gives us a propeller speed of 2700 rpm mm -hmm. um, but then we've also got a 1.22 gear ratio, mm -hmm. which gives us the 3300 RPM mm -hmm. up speed, mm -hmm. um, which matches the Yamahas and the Mercuries mm -hmm. and allows us to reach the top end speeds. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it was all designed purposely for marine application. Mm -hmm. Now, this has cost us a lot of money to mm -hmm. follow this route, but it was the only way we could get there. Ideally, we would have taken an existing block, an existing power head, mm -hmm. but there was two problems. One is that they were all horizontal, mm -hmm. which meant that then, you know, the crankshaft, crankshaft would come out the side mm -hmm. and you would need a very long shaft going down, okay. which would mean it, because of the vibration, it would mm -hmm. have to be very thick yep. and heavy, mm -hmm. which that's the biggest enemy of the outboards. Mm -hmm. It's the weight mm -hmm. and the packaging size. Mm -hmm. The other problem that we find is that there are two types of blocks in the industry, diesel blocks mm -hmm. or in the world. One are the truck and generator diesel blocks, mm -hmm. which um, can probably withstand the duty cycle of marine mm -hmm. requirements, but they are so big and heavy that, mm -hmm. you know, it would be three times the weight of these blocks and we wouldn't comply then with ABYC, mm -hmm. um, buoyancy and floatability mm -hmm. requirements. The other blocks are the automotive blocks. Mm -hmm. Now the automotive blocks are still probably 50 to 60% more heavier than the current gas blocks. Mm -hmm. um, much closer to the target, but the main problem is they can't withstand the duty cycle. Okay. So car engines, as you, you will know, mm -hmm. normally are comfortable at around about 2000 RPM mm -hmm. and, and below that really, mm -hmm. and with very little load on them. Mm -hmm. So when we start testing automotive engines under a marine duty cycle, mm -hmm. um, they basically heat up, crack, they just, they just break very quickly. So okay. this was the only way we could achieve this packaging and the and meet the requirements so just to clarify this engine is available now yes. um, and are there references currently in the market so we are setting up as we speak five boats in the US mm -hmm. um, two of them are with the US government mm -hmm. uh, the Navy and the Coast Guard mm -hmm. another one is a twin installation on the new intrepid mm -hmm. nomad 345 mm -hmm. which is based out of Fort Lauderdale mm -hmm. um, the other boat is a metal shark mm -hmm. a 32 foot mm -hmm. um, and then the fifth one is a boat that's going to be based out of the West Coast mm -hmm. between Washington and California that's, that's going to be a single installation mm -hmm. and that one's most probably going to be a safe boat mm -hmm. now we are only sell 
exclusively through our distributor network. Mm -hmm. We've got at the moment 27 distributors globally, and we hope mm -hmm. to increase that up to 35 before June. Mm -hmm. And the reason we do that is because we want service to come with the engines. Mm -hmm. So if anything goes wrong, if there's any problem, mm -hmm. we want to have a very good after sales and warranty service mm -hmm. to support the customers. Mm -hmm. And we have to accept that we don't have the bandwidth mm -hmm. to offer that service on a global level ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, so our distributors have started placing orders with Cox mm -hmm. for delivery start of July. Okay. Um, so we've got a, it's a bit of a longer lead time at the moment, mm -hmm. and that's just because um, building up this process of supply, manufacturing, um, and delivery and testing it takes it takes a little bit of time at the beginning. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you have a good head start. Again, we Thank appreciate you. your time. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. This is Greg Troutwine with Maritime Reporter TV.